Hey there everybody and welcome to this next tutorial. In this lesson we're going to go over a little bit about Substance Stager and how to go ahead and if you already have a 3D model how to get it into Substance Stager and create your very own product mock-up. And Substance Stager for those of you who don't know is part of the Substance Suite that comes with Adobe Creative Cloud. It's a massively powerful tool and a really quick visualization tool especially for those of you who want to get in and out of the 3D rendering process relatively quickly. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to go ahead and use a model from Adobe Stock. For those of you who don't know about Adobe Stock or think it's all paid material, I just want to pull this over here and kind of show you. Uh, I went ahead and went to the free category here and found the 3D. And look at all these free 3D models that you can download. It is massive. So if you're looking to experiment with 3D and you know just play around with some of the uh, options that you can have, but maybe you don't want to buy a credit or you know go and pay for a 3D model or model it yourself, you can go ahead and find some amazing options right here. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started and add a few things to our scene. So in a substance stager, you can see you have models, you have various materials, you have lights and different lighting setups as well as background images. We're gonna start by setting the stage by pulling in our very own background image. What we wanna do for this is blur the illusion of 2D and 3D. So I'm gonna start just by navigating to a off-camera folder and I have a image I found that is a ground plane. And I just simply left clicked, dragged and dropped that to my scene. Now, when I look at this, you know, you can see that that image is in there and you know it's kind of doing its thing and I can play a little bit with the focal length but notice that that image isn't changing once I do it so again uh, one of the things you're gonna want to be you know very careful of when you're dealing with uh, especially things like you know importing images and whatnot is you're gonna want to make sure that again you're going to play with that images transformation so as soon as I drop it in what I typically like to do is you know I like to make sure I'm selecting that background image by double clicking. I look at things like output size, but I'm gonna go up here to the match image. And I have this image as kind of an Instagram-esque post. So it's, a, I believe, a perfect square. I'm gonna go ahead and hit match perspective. And that's gonna take a few seconds and it's gonna give me my image. Now, one thing you may not see when you're in here and it may worry you is your grid goes away. But if you hold the Alt key and your left mouse button, you can align that grid to match up pretty uh, normally to the ground plane in your specific scene. So I like what we have here. The next step is to import our model of our watch. So I'm gonna go to the file import 3D model and I'm going to navigate through all the folders on my desktop and I'm gonna find the watch folder. And here I have a watch folder that came from Adobe Stock and it already has all the lovely textures. In the import settings, I know this is from Adobe Stock, so I'm pretty confident that it will look good. I'm going to just hit import and see what happens. We're going to let that load in, and sure enough, that looks pretty good. If I want to move this around, I definitely can do that. I can use my W key to activate the move tool, my E key to activate that rotate tool, and that R key to activate that lovely scale tool. I can also hold my Alt key down just to kind of get that ground plane into place just so I know where things are. Now, we can essentially match this even further using that match image button. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to scale this up because I kind of want to see the shadow underneath it. And I want to make sure, you know, as I play around with this setup that, you know, it kind of looks like that shadow is underneath on that kind of pillar there. So I'm going to just arrange it using my transform tools. Again, uh, you know, WER for any typical 3D program are pretty standard in the sense of uh, your 3D setup. I like the look of this. I'm going to go back to that E key and maybe we'll just give it kind of a floating-esque tilt. And just catching that light, I really like this. All right. So one thing I'm not a huge fan of is this model came with this default texture of a watch face. I like it. I mean, it's okay, but I want to put something with a little more branding on it. So I'm going to just double click to activate that specific part of the model. Now, when you're importing models into Substance Stager, it's really important that one, they're clean. In other words, if you're a 3D aficionado, you know that means no end gons You want to make sure typically everything is closed off. 
And also keep in mind the pieces of the model. So having your model in different pieces will help you if you wanna change the texture up in any way. Now that I have this screen selected, I'm gonna go over here and find the place image on model icon. And when I do that, that's gonna open up a little toolbar and I'm gonna to navigate to a file that I have, which is, as you guessed, my very own kind of watch face, which I really like. And I'm gonna just kind of rotate this in place ever so lightly and use this kind of manipulator just to get that thing. And if you click away, it's not a big deal. You can just go back and double click and find your graphic. So again, getting that into place so it looks good. You can see I have my little logo on it and I can expand this and it's gonna just stay within that specific um, kind of piece of the 3D model. So now that I have that, I like that, I, I, I dig it, it's more on my brand. Now I can move over and play a little bit with the lights. I could play with the materials again if I wanted to change up the material. So, you know, there's so many materials that come with this. You can also go online and find even more, but I mean, look at all these materials. It's absolutely wild how much kind of ships with this. And we can, you know, go ahead and play if we want to put like that carbon fiber band on it, we could go ahead and drag that on. It's going to, you know, want to make sure that you select the specific part rather than the whole watch. I'm going to hit undo there, but you can select your specific parts by going over to the side. I like what we're looking at, though. This is looking really nice. What's the next thing we can do? Well, we have a couple options. I really want to render a still picture, but what if you wanted to add animation? Well, now in the recent updates of Substance Stager, you can go to the Animation tab when your object is selected. Here, you have the ability to either orbit a camera around your whole object or objects, or simply do a turntable spin. So if I were gonna activate the spin of this, I could set the duration, the rotation of the spin, whether it's 180 or 360, and you see this in a lot of product ads for like Apple and Sony and Samsung and Android and all those places but we could change that up and play now with our timeline to get that kind of cool product placement effect. So this looks really neat. Um, I went ahead and did one earlier with a different background and it took about three to five minutes to render at medium quality. So you can kind of see just, you know, the ability that you can get. And even at medium quality, this is pretty crisp and pretty clear uh, for that final result. So again, I wanna to stick to a still product render, maybe for an advertisement or whatnot. So let's go ahead and play around with that. So once you get everything to your liking, I'm gonna to go to our render tab and I'm gonna add a few different things. One, I wanna set my folder to where my project goes. So I wanna make sure it goes into my watch folder that I originally had, and we're gonna call this product still. And we wanna render this a few different ways, but. I'm gonna to stick to the PSD 32-bit channel because I wanna add some editing to this to add my own touch. Now, I don't really want to do that turntable, so for me, I'm gonna make sure I just render the current frame. And I have a few options. I can do the real-time render or I can do the ray trace render. If you have a graphics card that supports ray tracing, you can go ahead and use that. Now, if you have an RTX NVIDIA card, you could actually not only render with your GPU, but utilize the new, the new Denoise export, which will again use kind of intelligent AI based data from the 3D scene to remove all those annoying uh, particles and dust and little firefly in, in, you know, noise in your render that you don't like. So now that I have this ready to go, I'm gonna simply hit render and you can see it is pretty instant. It's gonna take a few seconds to kind of just dive through, but I'm already, you know, again, if you have a graphics card that's an RTX or higher, you can go ahead and render that pretty, pretty quickly. So what that's done is that has created uh, what I need. I have essentially a PSD ready to go in which I can kind of put that into my next program. So the next case, what we want to do is we want to get that PSD and open it up in Adobe Photoshop. All right, now that we have that in Adobe Photoshop, you can notice we have a pretty nice image happening here. Um, again, really sharp, kind of in that Instagram social media format. This is giving me additional masking layers. Again, if I wanted to add that watch face or do any sort of other animations playing with some of these masks, I can play with that, which is really nice. It also isolates 
my product from the background and allows me to kind of go through and use my color picker to maybe adjust the different backgrounds. So if my client didn't want that pedestal, we can add some pretty lovely things. And I'm kind of digging this. We're gonna play around with a few different options, but let's start with that pedestal in place and see what we can do. So a couple things I want to add to this is one, I wanna kind of play around a little bit with uh, maybe some dust in the scene. So again, you can find thousands of kind of stock-esque kind of different dust types. So I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, just kind of paste some of the textures in that I have typically. Let's go in here, get this, and you can see, I'll move it on top of everything so you can see it pretty well, but we have kind of this light thing. And again, if, you know, you're getting resolution issues because you did render that at a pretty high resolution, don't fret. Um, again, there's thousands of these kind of light textures. You can even make your own if you wish, um, but you know, really have some fun with it and go through. And again, we're going to just use this ultimately as a blending mode. So this one's a little wild, but we'll, we'll cut it back. So again, I'm going to pull that down a little bit further and I'm going to hit return. It's a big mess, but when I start to hit multiply and play with that opacity, we can kind of just add a little texture and I'm going to put that behind the watch. I don't want to cover my product too much. Uh, secondly, maybe I want to add an adjustment layer. So I'm going to go into the new adjustment layer and go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to just play with the brightness and the darkness. Things are looking good. Again, we're having some fun just getting some motion into this final piece. I could even play with the color. So if I wanted to amp up that blue or kind of make it more of a blue green, I could go ahead and add warm or cool colors using my curve effect. I love using this curve effect to get that final look. Another thing I may want to do is add a filter. So Photoshop has some really great filter effects in which, you know, you can go through and add blur galleries. So we can add things like tilt shift or iris blur. So for instance, if I want to add kind of a circular blur to this and have that be my focal point, I could go ahead and add this and kind of just play with the blur settings just to get, again, more kind of focal length onto that actual object. Again, we're just trying to frame it. You can even add um, different lighting effects within each individual filter. I like that. I like where we're going. Again, if we want to change it out, we can always do that a little bit later. Uh, another thing I may want to add is more light streaks, right? We want those beams of light to kind of come through and and you know, kind of just play uh, to our product and kind of frame it a little bit more. So I can go through and again, add lots of images. I'm gonna right click on this image here and we're going to go ahead and put it into place. Control T, flip horizontally because we wanna kind of match that initial look and once again, just use our blending modes. We have lots of them. Now we're getting some really nice effects here. And I put it under the curves on purpose just because I want that kind of um, more dramatic look than I was getting. And it's really helping accentuate that light at the top of the screen. So now we have like some really soft blurs. If we really wanted to, if that, if that shadow or something wasn't to our liking, just remember you can go through and take that and then actually hit that with a little blur as well. So if your shadow and your, your computer didn't render it to exactly where you wanted it to, when you save things as a PSD, you can kind of go through and, and look that out a little bit. All right, so now that we're getting to the end, Control D there, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm liking kind of the angle and the resolution that I have. Uh, I'm enjoying, again, maybe I want to pump up that dust a little bit just to kind of give it a little more framing. Awesome. And finally, you know, maybe we add one more adjustment layer at the very top just to see some color options. So we'll do a human saturation adjustment layer and we'll just kind of run through um, a little bit of, you know, just different color options. Sometimes this is a good way. Sometimes they look kind of lame. Uh, you just, you know, I always like to do this at the end just to make sure I'm getting my temperature here of the overall piece in a nice manner. So again, I'm going to kind of keep it at this level. Awesome. 
So again, if you wanted to do this with the video, you can render that flattened MP4, take this into After Effects. You would need a little more masking. Uh, just know when you render the turntable, you won't be able to get all the layers like I did here. But you know there are ways around that. So I hope you enjoyed this quick lesson on diving into product placement in Substance Painter and Substance Stager and all of the fun Substance Suite programs where you can take this and amplify your creativity. Thanks, everybody.